You guys dropped a bomb on us before we started recording. Shocked us. Might shock other people. Would you care to share? Yeah, we are pregnant um, <laughs> as, 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 as we speak. With um, quadruplets. Yes. With no. one, no. One baby. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. Boy, do we have a treat for you today. I'm so excited. I This actually happened in the moment. I found out this morning some huge news about this couple. We are talking about our favorites, Bodie Miller and Morgan Beck Miller. That's right. What'd you find out, babe? Tell us. Okay, you're going to hear this whole story and why this is such a big deal. Because we filmed, we actually filmed this interview a few weeks ago. Yeah. But Morgan and Bodie just found out they're having a girl. A little baby girl, which is a massive deal. A huge deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. And we'll get into uh, why. But Bodie and Morgan are two professional athletes. Bodie is one of the world's greatest skiers that we've ever seen. Of all time and Literally, we'll ever see. Olympic champion, world champion, like multiple times over. Yes. You would probably recognize him. And we met Bodie a couple of years ago. I think it was 2016. Yep. When Sean was doing the CNBC show, CNBC <laughs> show called Adventure Capitalists. And one more time. Huh? You good? CNBC. CNBC show there called you go. Adventure Capitalists. <laughs> there you go. And uh, we got to meet a lot of fun people, including Tony Gonzalez, Vernon Davis, and Bodie Miller, mm-hmm. who were co-investing in companies with you. Long story short, we loved him. Had yes. a great time with him. He's just nonstop laughs, as you'll hear uh, in this interview. Him and Morgan are just good people, mm-hmm. have amazing stories. And then his wife, Morgan, yeah. model slash professional beach volleyball player. Yes, who is just a beast and her story and their story, how they met, how they started having babies, their whole mission in life around children. It just, it's one that I don't think you guys should miss. Yes. So last thing we'll say, and then I'll get into it is a couple of years ago, Morgan and Bodie actually tragically lost uh, their daughter due Emmy. to a swimming pool incident. And they've been very public about it, shared a lot of the experience and what they learned from it. And it's actually because of Bodie and Morgan. We've talked about this in previous videos mm-hmm. that we put Drew into ISR swim classes um, to make her safe around any bodies of water. And gotten so many people within the Nashville community and then friends that we have outside of Nashville who have babies, gotten them into IS- ISR. It's something that can truly save a baby's life. And... Yeah, I, I, I love their, their mission behind it. Yeah, it can it can go a long way to helping the situation. Anyway, Bodie and Morgan are doing a great thing by spreading the awareness and um, spreading information. And if you want to find out more about Bodie and Morgan, we will link information about them down below. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into this one with Bodie and Morgan Beck Miller. All right, Morgan, Bodie, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I just want to get this out of the way. Uh, Bodie, we met three years ago via the show that you and Sean did together. And it was long. It was four years, wasn't it? Was yeah. it four years ago? Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Time well, flies. or if not five, regardless, <laughs> that's how long, that's how long I've had a man crush on you, Bodie. And <laughs> right. I know you're into horses. I know you're into horses. I don't know if you've looked into this. I am recently the new proud owner of a digital horse via NFTs. Anyway, I don't understand anything that's going on, but I was like, Bodie would be proud of me. <laughs> he owns real horses. I own or digital Or I'd be like disappointed because it has nothing to do yeah, with. Yeah, you're right. There's yeah. a chance for disappointment yeah, there. for but sure. Anyway, it's good to talk to you guys. It's been a while. Absolutely. Wait, I am curious. Five years ago, four years ago, when we were on the show, you guys had just bought a boat. Yacht. No, no, we had were- a boat. We had a boat. When we first met, it was in Florida. And I was there getting the boat from Turkey. I'd shipped it over from Turkey and Morgan was there playing a volleyball tournament and I poached in on our volleyball tournament. That's where we first met. That was in 2011, 2012. And then we- Did you have to like drive it all the way? uh, That was my original plan was to take it in Florida and go down through the Panama Canal, which I've sort of always wanted to do. Just, I think it's a pretty amazing thing. And then we met and uh, the boat was trashed anyway. The, it had like gotten just crushed across the Atlantic and you know, on a container ship. And so we just hung out from that point till now. And <laughs> when we, we lived on the boat, we got married on the boat down in San Diego. It was what? awesome. Um, and then we got pregnant. Morgan was like, we're not living on a boat. So 
since then. <laughs> um, <laughs> we true. bought a place up here in Toto, right near where she grew up and where her parents came back to. And um, we've been here ever since. The boat's been floating down in San Diego. Wow. Can, are you good living on a boat? No. I'm trying to just take Sean on an RV trip, and she keeps shooting me down for that. But I'd rather no, do the boat. That's so fun. Thank you, Morgan. I think you take an RV trip across the country with yeah. two babies under two. <laughs> Morgan gets it. She wants <laughs> we it. almost did. No. I'm not kidding you. We almost did it with. We would have had five boys from <laughs> oh. well, you know, two, two under three. You know, one and a half, one and a half, two and a half, two and a half, five mm-hmm. and eight. And it would have been crazy. We would have probably had to get like a PlayStation or something and just strap them to the ground in there. But um, I think it's awesome. I lived in a motorhome for 15 years over in Europe when I was racing. Um, so I'm really comfortable with it. It definitely would be a little different. I think more for us, it was just like what motorhome has places to sleep for that <laughs> yeah. many kids. And like, how can you semi child But it's such a small space. It's actually for you guys probably be awesome because you can clean up in three minutes and you don't have to worry about them really escaping or going anywhere crazy because there's nowhere to go. You're not helping my case I'm at all. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> okay, so let's start Let's start from the beginning. You mentioned you met Morgan in a volleyball game. So we have the most, quote-unquote, successful skier in U.S. His, in, in history? What? In, 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 in history. Of all time. No, of all time, dude. It's This is the quote I'm reading, of all time. And then we have Morgan who... Complex Magazine says is one of the 25 hottest athletes. Do you know this? Oh, wow. Professional beach volleyball player. What was that initial interaction like? Did the universe uh, we blow have a, up? We have a pretty, we have a pretty uh, you know, as you are married for, you know, years coming up on a decade, it, your story changes quite a bit. I like to think I like to think there was a simmering desire underneath there, but the uh, the the basic story was that she wasn't buying it right at first. Um, she had been backstory. She'd been to the 2002 Olympics when she was an awkward 12 year old, and I was double silver medalist there. Her parents had been, and their parents say they saw me rowdy and around with my buddies, like you know, burning out in my car or something, which. It wasn't me because I didn't go to where they were, but still, it was probably one of my buddies like, I'm Bodie Miller, woo, like, <laughs> yeah. Which happens actually more than you'd, you'd expect. But so she was there. So her parents had, her parents did not have a positive impression of me from then. And so, you know, when we met, it was kind of like, I don't know, in, in a way, I guess it was love at first sight, although it wasn't really sight because um at least on my side again she was not buying it right away but within a week and this is undisputable within a week we were both on board and we yeah. we haven't really spent any significant time apart since then what Wait. i love about what i just saw is morgan was cheesing so hard during that whole <laughs> rend- the, that whole story night. you were telling yeah yeah is there anything well, you'd like to add to the story I, here morgan or so, so we had the same agent and i'd seen he said oh i picked up a beach volleyball player and he was like, this is her. And she had her little card and she looks like super mean. Like she's super hot, but she looks mean. Like he has this like serious gal. Looks almost like a little bit softer Russian dominatrix kind of thing. Like hair pulled back. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I was like, oh God, she looks, he was like, don't even think about it. I was like, dude, I'm not thinking about it. She looks way like, I need like a happy, friendly, like easy going. And so I, I hadn't even considered it after that um at all and then we were in the same place completely randomly for like a month and a half leading up to that meeting in fort lauderdale where she was at the preakness i was there for the race she was there for um volleyball Mm -hmm. under armor or something we were like in random places around the country for a month straight week after week after week within a mile of each other and lowell was like you got to check out her facebook and i looked and i was like that's just kind of weird and I love volleyball. I played, you know, just messed around in, in high school. And I was like, cool. The volleyball tournament's literally 800 yards down the beach from where I was staying in Fort Lauderdale. I was like, I'm going to go. And he was like, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't know if you needed tickets or whatever. So I called her and she blew me off and was like, yeah, I don't want you to come. I don't need distraction. And I was like, whatever. Like, I'm going anyway. I don't give a shit. Like, I'm going. So deal with it. And then when we got there, it wasn't like a visual love at first sight. It was like, I watched her play. I saw that kind of, when you see somebody play at the right level in the right sort of scenario, you can see right to who they yeah. are. And, um, that was, that was it for me. And then it took a, she's a little slower. It took her a few <laughs> days to, to buy into it. But by the time we flew back to California together, 
uh, within a day after that was when uh, everything clicked. Well, here's the best part. He told me, he's like, when I realized that you were the woman I was going to spend the rest of my life with, I was actually really bummed out because I knew I wasn't you were really bummed be- out. I was just like, <laughs> oh man, that's a lot. I knew you were going to be really complicated. I was yeah. like, maybe she- it was good. Yourself. Yeah, I love that you had decided she was the one, even though in the back of your mind, you're like, oh man, this is going to be rough. <laughs> well, you're right. But that's the thing is like, I think I have a perspective on it. Like the choices you make, you can't see the end results and a marriage. Ultimately, if you are serious about the vows you take and all that, it's, it's a long road, right? So the person you marry is not the person that, you know, is the same 40 years later, or 50 years later in with kids. I mean, she was single and was playing volleyball and was like, like I was when I was competing, I was still competing at that time too. So we're both like selfish athletes, you know, doing our own thing. And so it was like, I, I just saw that she was definitely going to be, you know, she's a, she's like an alpha female. She fucking runs the show. And I was like, all right, well, he was a walk in the park. There's, there's that. that. He was so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's interesting. First of all, I love how you guys are sharing a chair. Is that, is, are you guys just yeah like one? <laughs> it's a big chair. Okay. 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 Cool. You know, Bodhi, you've spoken previously about, um, your upbringing and you had really unique, I don't think there's electricity plumbing. You spend most of your time outdoors. Uh, and Morgan, you come from a different background, I believe. Yeah. But here you are, I guess you meshed immediately over competition. Uh, and, and that was the, the, the forming factor. I don't think it was competition. I think once we got to know each other after that first week, it really was, we shared a lot of the same values and the mindset that we kind of approach life with. And we started to recognize that the more difficult situations were kind of the better we were together and the more calm we got. And after a while, we just started to realize how compatible we got, we were in those situations. And I love how she says after a week when we got to know each other. Well, it's no. like, <laughs> who gets to know each other in a week? But, well, no. But yeah. that's that was, the truth. It really was. Like, yeah. We had, we had, I think, you know, there's all sorts of different philosophies on how relationships work, but like some people say opposites attract. Some people say um, you need, you know, like-minded people who share a lot of values or interests or whatever. In our case, we both were athletic. We both competed. We both had lots of kind of things that were similar, but you, as you pointed out, you couldn't get further apart in terms of geopolitical, geographically, socially, everything in terms of the way we were raised. She was raised in Coto de Casa, California, you know, wealthy family, like first car was a Mercedes. You know, my first car was a 79 diesel rabbit that I bought for $185. Um, you know, I didn't wear clothes basically until I was like nine. Um, you know, so all of that was was really kind of on the side. The parts that were really interesting and cool was that we had really like interlocking qualities. Like she's really organized and likes to like plan things and I'm really flexible and just like to go with whatever. And um, I have a ton of patience and kind of that side of tolerance and she has a lot of like discipline and focus. And like, um, so we, I think as a team, like, you know, which is partly one of the criteria of, of being married as a team, we kind of filled each other's weaknesses and, and gaps. And, and there wasn't a lot of confrontation over strengths. Like, I don't think either one of us really argue with what the other person's better at and just kind of like, okay, defer to them. Wow. Well, he was so also, you- what I loved is that there were no secrets. He was incredibly forthcoming, incredibly honest, even if I didn't like the answer um, and insanely committed when he, he bought my wedding ring in front of me a month after we met. And he said, what would you say if I asked you to marry me? And I said, no, no way. And, <laughs> <Plot twist. laughs> and he uh, said to me, he's like, that's okay. I have a two pronged approach. I'm going to get you to say yes. And in my mind, I'm thinking, good luck. Like this is yeah. we're not, we're not wow. there. And he just was so committed to making it happen. And he he's, hasn't changed since the day we met. And that's just something about him that for me, where he's like a total safe space where I feel like Mm. all the things that were my worst qualities, he made better. And so I, I started, she has tried to divorce me, not like maybe as serious (laughs) as it sounds when I say it that way, but like at least eight times where it's like, and I'm like, nope, sweetie, it takes two, two. It's like the nuclear codes. You have to turn both keys and I don't turn my key. So it doesn't happen. She's like, damn you. 
spoiled again. I'm like, yeah, well. It's true. It's totally I, true. I don't know. Wait, are we laughing about it? How serious were you? Like, How serious? I think there's only been like one time that okay. I've been super serious. Well, okay. a, a couple of times there was a little bit of drinking involved. One was in, in Denver. And I literally, we're in Denver, which is, I know this town well, but it's not an entirely safe town at like 1.30 in the morning. And she had a meltdown because I'd, I'd taken a picture when I said I wasn't going to take, no. I'd, I'd been doing the, the, the ski day thing was, in Denver, the big expo there. So I'd been taking pictures and signing autographs all day. And she was like, I just want you not to take pictures at the bar. Like and I, I was just like, want Fine. an hour of your time. But it was all, going out. but it was all the people there. And, and while she was in the bathroom, t- two guys with their wives came up and were like, we want to take a picture. And I was like, okay, quick. And like, we took one. She came back right then. It was like, Fuck that. And like was out of there. <laughs> okay. So we went back to the room. We went back to the room and this- she was like trying to pack her shit, but was pretty drunk and was like, ah, I'm out of here. This Screw this. 10 years ago. And then and then she left her bag there and walked down and was just walking down the street. And I was like, I can't let her go. She's gonna get mugged. Like she's tall, hot, blonde, walking through sketchy Denver. So like I'm like half a block behind her, just walking along, dirt, 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 like following her, like total stalker looking. Um, it was not then, one of my finest moments. And then there but... was there was a couple more that weren't like again. It's a lot of it is she has a she lives in her emotions. Like her emotions go all over, and mm. that's what's real for her right then. And I'm able to like be like, look, I get that you're feeling this way, but it'll just give it a little time, like relax. And so I think that's where we we end up getting through those. I think that's Anna and I a hundred, a hundred percent of the time. I live in my emotions. That is my reality. Yeah. And I don't know if you experience the same thing, Bodie, but when I tell Sean to just chill out, it usually doesn't, doesn't, end well. doesn't go no, well. Doesn't, yeah. and, and when I say like, <laughs> when I, I've implied and, and actually straight up a couple of times said like, your behavior is delusional right now. And that goes, <laughs> that, that goes, that goes, well. that goes yeah, that's not a good one. So um, I eliminated that one from the repertoire. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think just get out of the thesaurus and like try to figure out different Some words word. for delusional. Yeah. yeah. Delusional does not go over well. <laughs> No, are you kidding? Especially when, like, as a woman, I'll be like, my like my emotion is actually fact in the moment. Yeah. And he's like, it's what you're doing is delusional and no. it's not reality and it's not black and white. And I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> the worst. The next After day, I'm like, I was our first child. It was you have postpartum depression. You're delusional. Before I even had the ability to recognize it, and I was like. I might suffocate you in your sleep. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I slept with one eye open, I will say that, for a little while. <laughs> yeah. Today's episode is brought to you by June Shine. Baby, I have been loving getting to hang out on our back patio lately now that the weather is warming up. Same here. But you know what makes it even better for me? Let me guess. Some of your June Shine. I swear, Andrew is addicted to like 20 different drinks, but this one I see more often than not. It's kombucha. Yes. It's hard kombucha, and I love it. It is definitely one of my favorite happy hour beverages. You can't blame me, though, because it's hard kombucha, and it's low in sugar. It's easy on the gut, yeah. gluten-free, and full of probiotics. Plus, it tastes amazing. Babe. I know. I actually got to have like a sip of it right before I got pregnant. I can't wait to join back in, but I truly, we we take our beverages seriously in this house. Yeah, yeah. Put a lot of research behind it because we get bored with water, mm. and this one is is super high quality. I yes. actually love everything that's in it. One of my favorite flavors of theirs is called the Midnight Painkiller. <laughs> Even though all of them taste amazing, this one is their twist on the classic tiki cocktail. Mm-hmm. It has some pineapple, coconut, orange, activated charcoal. Which is so good for you, by the way. Yes, and nutmeg. It's delicious, it's light, and it's refreshing. And we have worked out an exclusive deal for Couple Things podcast listeners. You guys can receive 20% off plus free shipping on their best-selling variety pack. This is a great way to try all of their delicious flavors. Go to juneshine.com forward slash eastfam or use code eastfam at checkout to claim this deal. That's J-U-N-E-S-H-I-N-E dot com slash eastfam. This discount is only valid for their variety pack. Juneshine can also be found in over 10,000 stores across the country, including Whole Foods, Safeway, Kroger, and Publix. I had the chance to sit down with their co-founder. Yeah. I know it's a delightful conversation, so go check them out. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. We'll also link that down below. Check it out. Let's get back to it. Okay, so get engaged after a month and a half or so. No, we got engaged oh, okay. um, 
Middle of September. Yeah, so we met five, May 26th. Five months. Four, four, four months. Okay, okay. His math. We met May 26th. We got engaged middle of September. And then the next day, he went down to Portillo, Chile. For, and, it was supposed to go for like a month. Yep. Yeah, and then I came back early and we, and we were, her parents were like, okay, whatever, you're engaged. It's like, don't go fast. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, don't do it, but like certainly don't do anything fast. We were like, totally, yeah, we're we're in no rush. And then I came back from Portillo and we got married the next week. So do you think there's oh, something? Yeah. <laughs> wow. And then oh, we got pregnant awesome. after that. Well, Morgan had been married before and she had like a big OC wedding and like did the whole thing and it lasted six months. It's not very long. Something like that. Yeah. Some very <laughs> short period of time. The guy was not not the right one. Um so we we basically we didn't invite anybody, it was just us and our cat. Um, and an officiant on the back of the boat, and oh, uh, that pissed that, that pissed everybody off. Oh, pretty, that made them mad. Yeah, pretty much. But hold on, let me find that letter. So the situ- the situation was Morgan had been previously married. You and she stepped into a situation where she was stepmom to two kids previously. Is that right? Or, yeah. So well, it's not like it was a no. There was super no, clean. There was no soft transition. It wasn't like. Yeah. A, <laughs> Like, uh, oh, let's get engaged for a couple of years, live together, we'll maybe have a dog or whatever. It was like, yeah, it was like super duper accelerated the whole thing. And that, yeah. that was that was really admirable is that she was able to she was a great stepmom. I mean, look, to, this is another layer that is in nutty is is two weeks after we met. We've been together every day since we met. Um, we literally had you know been apart. I went to the boat, I guess, you know, and she was in Hermosa. And then, um, and he had a fun night and the result was another baby. So we found out two weeks after we had met and we'd been together the whole time that I was going to be a father to another woman's from before Morgan. But, and so she, she, we, that's what she was referencing when she said like the more difficult it was like, that was gnarly. Like I, I, and that was actually one of the times where we almost broke up was after that I did, I was got hammered and was absolutely oh we're really doing like a tell and then well just we don't have well, details but, you guys the, get all yeah. the, but details. the point is the point is that when we got through that that phase that was like that was in my opinion really impressive that she was willing to try to work through that and and pull it off well it was, so let's just and then we and then she was a, a true mom to nate from basically when he was say, mm-hmm. five months old i grew up in a very modern family I have my stepsister, all of my aunts have married men who have children previously. So for me, like blended families are very normal. So when I found out that he had a daughter, he was a great dad. It didn't scare me. When I found out there was another baby coming, I told him like, listen, whatever you want to do, totally fine. I'll support you. We don't have to stay together. And I go, it's a child. It's not anything terrifying or scary. You've done this before. And so he did Which respect to you, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. But it's because it's kind of terrifying. <laughs> You're like, it's kind of terrifying. Totally. Is. That's, <laughs> and then at that point, it wasn't just terrifying. It was, I, I was, you know, dealing with all, it, it was a very deliberate approach and it was, you know, no, but if it anything, was, it was, there was a lot of animosity on my part towards that, even though I knew I'd love the kid and I wanted to be a, a great dad. It was like there was other elements of that. They were really frustrating. So mm. it was really impressive. But if anything, it's credit to my parents for showing me that a blended family can be beautiful. It can be normal. And it was all about putting the child first. And if you could let go of your ego and focus on the kid and what was in the kid's best interest and find a way, because parenting, even when you're married, like it's not a competition. And especially co-parenting, you sometimes parents default to making it a competition and making the child the pawn. And my parents showed me that that was not how it was supposed to look ever. And so for me, it was not scary. It was very normal. It was how I grew up. And obviously they never really painted a picture of the parts that were hard. So I was a little bit naive because it's not easy, but no, it's not. And yeah, her parents are kind of that way where they, they show the good parts, but um, but yeah, that was, that was a immediate, like, so the first call it like five, six, seven months of our marriage or of our relationship from when we met was nutty. It was like, oh, and man. then we had, and then we had, yeah, court stuff and everything else that she was there for and helped. And that was again, part of the different skill sets because there was a lot of detailed stuff. And we we had a court battle with that mom in California. She moved to New York when she was seven months pregnant because they have different 
child custody and, and child support laws that are more favorable for her. And then we won in New York. Then we came back here and won again. It was just like, it was an ongoing ass so kicking. At, well, I mean, at least in terms, of, in, terms of the, right, in terms of the judgments, I mean, but so anyway, then we had Nate more or less full time um, from that point forward. So as you said, then it was not just a stepchild. It was like, we had him and she was a mom while I was competing and we traveled all over the world and Europe and stuff. So she was, she jumped right into like full-time mom. I... It's scary. It, at the beginning. I mean, we've come so far. We've come so far and we've all of us now co-parent together in a way mm-hmm. that is amazing for Nate, but the beginning was really challenging. Yeah, super hard. I absolutely love everything you guys have said so far. And Morgan, you kind of interjected at one point and you were like, oh, you're going to just share all the details and spill all the like mm-hmm. dirty laundry basically. But it's honestly why we started this show because we got so sick and tired of people saying how marriage is supposed to be perfect and you are with the wrong person if you're arguing and if you blend a family that's right like we got so tired of it so i actually love it i love that you guys blended families and you've made it work and you've you don't believe in like the winning and losing of like either side and no you're not going anywhere as you used with like the bottom well, if, you try, if you try to live your live your life like it's an Instagram post, you know, where it's edited yeah. and like you show all the right stuff, like good luck. No, but the <laughs> reality of the situation is there are we have four parents involved mm-hmm. and there are three moms. And wow. there is still, you know, there's still a child that is the center of that. And I do believe in sharing what the reality is. I do believe in sharing the truth, but there's still a part of me that's like protect the kid. Because the last thing I want is for them to turn 14, 15, 16 and go online and be like, wait, what? Like you guys went to court and there was a messy battle and you guys argued. And that what I would rather have that be a conversation that we have with them where we can mm. sit down and say, listen, it wasn't perfect. And this is kind of what we went through. And, but look at how far we've come because we love you so much. Like you are the reason why we get along. But we do operate with that premise of like, everything's pretty, we, we've gotten accused of sort of infecting Kodo with our philosophy. Like our kids like are not like the typical orange County kids. They like, like to take their clothes off. They're like <laughs> way more. We like let them have at it. And like the other parents are like, honestly, it's awesome. It's so refreshing. Now we don't feel weird about doing it. Cause like somebody has got to do it. We had no choice really. It's just how we are. And our kids are too crazy. So now all the parents are kind of like, it's so refreshing to just feel like be a normal, you don't have to like, when you go to the club, like for dinner or whatever, you don't have to like, have everything totally, you know, buttoned up and look perfect and try to act perfect. People love our story. They're like, wait, so Nate has one mom. Dace <laughs> has another mom. You guys have like 13 kids. <laughs> yeah. they explain this to me. Yeah. And yeah. people do find it refreshing and it's, it's just our reality. So it's not something that is not normal for us. It's our daily routine and our daily interactions, but I can definitely see how some people will be like, Whoa, yeah. that's a lot, especially from, May 26th, we met to two weeks later, finding out another woman was pregnant to getting married October 7th to getting pregnant in November, miscarrying in January, and then having our stepson, my stepson, his son, come live with us full time in August. So I became full time mom um, with lots of ups. like. I can lots see how of, people are like that. You there. should write a book. Accelerated, <laughs> accelerated yeah. process for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm on that team. Yeah, I'd read it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode is also brought to you by Amp Human. Okay, I have been hibernating forever. I feel like, and the sunshine is back out, but I'm still looking for those alternative ways to get as much vitamin D in as possible. Why don't you tell us what you found? Okay, so I found Amp Human has a vitamin D gel-based lotion that delivers vitamin D directly through your skin. That's actually incredible if you think about it. It is. So I can get some vitamin D every single day. Since I've been using it consistently, I've actually seen an improvement in my sleep. The wild thing is just two pumps applied to the inner forearms contain 5,000 IU of vitamin D3 to boost your immunity and support brain function. And we have a special deal for a couple things, listeners. Visit amphuman.com forward slash eastfam and use code eastfam15 to get 15% off the D plus lotion today. We're going to link that down below and let's get back to it. 
I am curious though. You guys have gone through every roller coaster that a relationship can be tested through, basically. Totally. And we do oh, these interviews. All the time. Sure there's yeah. more, but. Oh. Yeah. yeah. No more. We we do these interviews though, where we will sit down with one couple who's gone through one thing, and they're just like, I don't know if I can get past it or forgive them or ever put it in the past and kind of move forward. How do you guys continually go up and down and move forward and actually still have such a strong relationship and marriage? That's tricky. Um, I think there's, we're, we're very different in that sense. Like I, I, I think maybe through competition, at least in my, you know, my upbringing, the way that I took responsibility for things had to like, I think it honestly started internally for me because I I'd do stupid things or make mistakes or not prepare or blow big races, big competitions for various reasons, either, you know, bad tactics, whatever, just being stubborn. And I had to like move past those. So it started like incrementally small. I started to be like, okay, doesn't do me any good to carry that forward. I had to figure out how to forgive myself for whatever my actions were. It was reality. It's in the past. I can't change it now. Um, and just try to adjust and, and adapt. And then that sort of morphed into getting really good at tolerating, you know, mistakes and errors and, you know, we're, we're human, right? We make mistakes daily. And then when I was dealing with all the sort of crap of being at the top of a sport where I was shouldering all the media, all the fan attention. And it was just, it was every day I was racing, you know, four or five times a week all winter. And I was doing interviews for Sweden and Switzerland and France and Austria and Norway and the U S and Canada. Whereas all the other guys only had to do the interview for their country. You know, it was like only the Austrian news wanted to cover the Austrians and they're in, you know, for each. And I just got so burned out. I was so negative. And that was around that Oh, Oh six Olympics where I just basically had a tantrum, um, petulant tantrum. And I was like over it. And then I, I realized like I had the skill set to actually apply it to that where I just kind of each, if you could sign a hundred autographs before you went up to race, the 101st person who you're like, look, I got to go, dude, there's a race. They're like, Oh, what a dick. Like that was inevitable. It happened every single day over and over again. And I realized like I had to not carry that one person forward and like lump them in with everybody else. So it allowed me to like forgive real time. And like each, each individual thing was a new one and I could just reset and and move right past it and move right past mm -hmm. it. And whether that's male compartmentalization or not, like <laughs> it, it is what it is. And it was a really good skill set. And then when we had to go through all this stuff, I'm kind of like, I'm able to do that really quickly. I just process and then, and then, you know, deal with it and then move forward. And then Morgan has a different process of like, she recycles a lot more and revisits a lot more, either past tragedy, past events, past everything. And I, and I have sort of the ability just to keep her moving forward chronological time. And then chronological time helps with everything because it's just kind of you normalize. And no, I've learned. So I will give him, I've learned so much from him. And I've learned that no matter what, everything carries an emotional toll and an emotional burden. And what I try and do is look at what I want the end result to be. And to get to that end result, you have to constantly move forward. And every time you hold on to something, it just slows you down or it holds you back. And so, and one of the things that for me is I only have so many fucks to give, honestly. And so I don't waste them in areas where they're not necessary. And I know that my goal is to move forward. Hi. You want to go to <laughs> um, this is Easton. But yeah, I think Hi, I think Easton. Hi, buddy. Yeah. But so for me, it's about. Can you say hi? Hi. 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 <laughs> Cutie. <laughs> oh, man. I figured you'd like Easton because it's part of your last name. So uh -huh. I like Easton, and he refuses yeah, to cut his hair, but he has the most unbelievable head of hair so i'm not not beautiful about it. but it's about and plus the kids to be able to show yeah. up every single day as the best version of yourself yes stuff recycles all the time but you have to learn how to realize the things that serve you for the greater good and the things that don't and just because you let it go in that moment doesn't mean it's not going to come back you might have to let it go 15 times 150 times but you have to make that choice the conscious choice to be like this is how i want to show up today stuff's going to come up and that's fine and kind of accept it and then be willing to let it go. And mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing is like, 
I'm going to be so mad at him some days. And then I'm going to be like, you know what? I got to get the laundry done. I got to clean the house. We got to take care of the kids together. And I can't do this without him. So I got to let it go. And definitely we, wow. We had that at various times. Like my brother passed away in 2013 and then losing Emmy, you know, those were times when we both, I think were completely like, Swamp, like just swamped right there was just no so you, there was a there was a difference between dealing with more manageable smaller things that maybe would overwhelm certain people but because of our skill set or because of the way we work together in our, our environment we were able to kind of manage that sort of built a foundation of kind of that's our pattern but then when something like that happened with any in particular we both were like in a time warp like we couldn't move forward we were like stuck in that yeah. day in that emotion in that spot For months. even though chronological time moved forward we were like completely like stagnant and then again that that sort of i think one or the other of us on various days because we had to still take care of the kids we had a, we had other kids and there was they were a huge tool in mm. like forcing us cuz even though they saw that we were upset they still were able to be happy and they still were able to like play and and have fun and then they, they pull you into moments of just kind of living in, in that moment with mm-hmm. them and moving forward and enjoying things. And then you'd feel like weird because you were enjoying something when you were suffering so badly. And then, you know, I think it, in that sense, it really educated us in terms of how to do that better, how to, how to actually still process your feelings and emotions and grieve and all that, but still continue to move without, forward. Without keeping that anchor in time. Right. Like that's without like sticking everything. in one place. Yeah. yeah. It's the anchors. You have to kind of find a way to let go of those. Otherwise, they just keep you from moving forward. Yeah. And I think the best thing that we can do for the ki- for our kids, and I think the coolest thing in life is growth and being better and um, improvement. And I think like, that's been one of the coolest things for us the past 10 years is we both changed so much in a way where we've just mm. become better people. And that in- has been the motivation. Incremental improvements. I yeah. Think. There's never like leaps and bounds. There's just tiny yeah. little incremental improvements every yeah. day. Well, that's what I respect about both of you is first of all, you're both terrifyingly intense. <laughs> uh, I can tell that. Uh, but Our also working. just talking about the situation that you uh, walked into together with the with the kids and the previous marriage and the, the, all the complexities. Mm-hmm. It's like there's no emotions coming off at, of uh, anger or, dis- or disappointment or any negative emotions. Just like, okay, well, this is a situation. We're going to deal with it. And this is how we're going to move forward. And yeah. that's what's so powerful, you know, with with everything you've been through. It's, and Emmy is a, a great example. I feel like you have experienced that. You went through it. And then you said, this is a situation. How are we going to move forward? And, and now you have directly impacted our lives and our daughter's life because – we put her in swim lessons because of your story and, and all the wisdom and resources that you guys have shared. And it's just, uh, I, I just get chills thinking about it because you've truly made the best out of a situation and, and haven't gotten sucked down. And I'm sure there's so many complexities, but you've, you've made a positive impact out of, out of, you know, some complex and, and disappointing tough situations, you know? <laughs> But, yeah, I think that was, it was part of the, the healing process was to like, there's so much that we don't know right now. And I think that shed light on that sort of paradigm of like, as parents, right? We, we sort of already mentioned this when we were chatting before, like, you don't really, no one's prepared. No one knows what to do. And there's no manual, there's no book. It's too, it's too um, in flux all the time. It's too circumstantial. Every, every decision you make, every nuanced thing. And you know, you guys probably recognize how, how fine a line you walked in your lives, right? One decision differently, one slip differently, you know, mm. one, one different thing. You could be in a totally different place or, or not be here mm. at all. And that's um, definitely, definitely a scary thing as a parent, because to some degree, it, it makes you feel like you, there's no way to prepare. There's no way to, to really keep your kids safe. All you can do is do, do your best thing. And for us, that, that was, it was really cathartic to, to kind of, you know, try to help other parents in that way. Like, you know, if we all really were super open about all the things that, you know, we went through and, and information and really had a great platform to share all that, you could prevent a ton of these tragedies that parents face all the time. Sometimes it's not a death. Sometimes it's just a broken arm or something else. But like, ideally, no parent wants to deal with any of that stuff. And a lot of it is just, we're kind of isolated as parents, right? Even though you have friends and all that, you don't really have, we don't have that many friends 
we try to like create good dialogue where you share everything, right? You share the good, the bad, you know, all the little things. You just don't know what piece of information could make a huge difference for somebody else. But that was a mm. huge part of that was like, at least in that one space, we felt like it was our obligation to, to Emmy and to each other and to, to actually try to make an impact on people, like share what we did, what we wish we knew before mm -hmm. and that we were able to find out fairly quickly afterwards, but only because we were searching. Today's show is also brought to you by Honey. As we've been getting busier as a family, I've come to love online shopping, I realized. I used to feel like I needed to go to the store, but I can literally buy everything I need right here at home. I feel like, okay, ladies, we've been trying to tell you this for years and I'm finally happy that it's stuck. Well, the thing I love even more about it is that there's always a deal going on. Plus with the help of Honey, I never have to scour the internet for promo codes. It's a free browser extension that searches the internet for promo codes and automatically applies it to your cart. It truly is incredible and has saved us so much money as well on literally everything. Honey supports more than 30,000 stores online. They vary from sites that have tech products to popular fashion brands, and even food delivery. It does all the work for you. I just recently bought a pair of tennis shoes and it saved me 15%. It was so easy. Honey has found it's more than 17 million members, more than $2 billion in savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash eastfam. That's joinhoney.com slash eastfam. And you know we're going to link it. Let's get back to it. Um, I have to say what started out is probably four little babies in our swim class has now turned into about 24. So amazing. it keeps growing and everybody in Nashville is asking for this lady's number. So thank you for that. You guys dropped a bomb on us before <laughs> we started recording. Shocked us. Might shock other people. Would you care to share? Yeah, we are pregnant. Um, as, 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 we, as we speak with um, quadruplets yes. with no. what no one baby yeah. that was the first thing I had the ultrasound tech come to the house I said I have to know because I was so nauseous <laughs> and I mean I've had so many kids so I'm not surprised that I'm showing early but I was showing very early um, and my pregnancy test came back very positive really five quickly. days yeah. before a miscarriage wow. and so I was slightly terrified that there was going to be two in there. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of work. Two is a whole new ball game. And I think twins stacked on twins would have been a bit much, but it was. It's one. Is, yeah. It's one and we have a gender <laughs> reveal coming up. Um, I was trying to convince her to, to wait and okay. just like find out, uh, you know, as the baby was born, but no, she, uh, she, she didn't want to do that. So we're going to do a gender reveal and hopefully It'll be exciting and fun for everybody. We didn't find out with our first, which honestly, after a home birth and going through that the, for the first time, I did not care what it was. Like the baby was out and that was all that mattered in that moment. And then the second one, um, we waited until like 23, 24 weeks, just because we had stuff going on in our life that really felt like it was pulling us backwards and we wanted something in the future to look forward to and to celebrate. And so I wanted to know. So we found out with Emmy and he did a really cute gender reveal for me, which was really fun. He did um, little figures, boy and girl figures in balloons and dark. Uh, and I put them on this huge board. I had to stuff all these little characters into balloons. <laughs> so as they, as they <laughs> pop, you, you had to count, you had to count. Put the and, boys yeah. on one side, girls, figures on the other side. Yeah. And genius, Bodhi. Cool. There was like seven genius. Right up, right up out of here. I never. <laughs> yeah. uh, and and Morgan, we're hoping for what this time around? This a girl. I mean, we we have really so after good. you want a peanut butter and jelly. All right, can that I get sounds it? pretty good. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, we can, we, we can um, wrap up here to make that PB and J. Yeah, yes. we definitely have we have a lot of boys. They're awesome, but I think five is good. So well, and after we're, we, we're hoping that. But if either way, I mean, I, I'm honestly, I'll be happy either way. Um, I would really like a little girl. In yeah. a way, I feel like it's not that we were robbed of being able to have like that relationship with a daughter, but being able to be able being able to have that would really be special. 
Mm. And um, I think it'd be good for the boys. Too. Yeah. I mean, they, they love their older sister, but she's kind of enough older that she doesn't. She's 13. Yeah, and she's she hasn't, and she hasn't been right. We yeah. share time. It's not, I think it would be great for the boys. And you can imagine having a little sister with five older brothers. <laughs> it's going to be, yeah. it'll be she pretty will, awesome. Dynamic, she'll I never think. get married. That's what yeah. will happen. No. Yeah. Never. Did you do a home um, birth with all the babies, Morgan? I did. Wow. Yeah, my mom so, and I respect. my mom and I delivered the twins by ourselves with no midwives or anybody there because they didn't get there in time. It yeah. was too fast. So it was just my mom and I and, and a lady taking pictures. And it was awesome. It was the most unbelievable thing. I mean, it was absolutely insane. Um, like I, I caught one who was born in, full in the sack. Like in a water balloon. Yeah, in a full no. like a and then, and my mom was like, didn't have, I was like, well, get like a towel or something. My mom was a midwife. So, but she hadn't <laughs> delivered a baby in 25 years yeah. and, never, and twins. never twins. So I'm like passing one baby underneath Morgan's leg to her. And she's like, got like kind of a rickety ass towel, like wraps him up. And then like, Morgan's like, call the midwife. And I have like Furnix and like every sort of shit on my <laughs> oh, hands. Wait, don't you love that he actually knows that word? And I'm like, like, yes. I'm like what the, what, what call? Like what? Like just yell. <laughs> I'm like, got her phone. I'm like, just like gumming up her phone. <laughs> and then she's like, I have another contraction coming. I'm like, ah, I like throw the oh, phone. Like, and then another man, they were born two minutes apart. I mean, so the second oh one is out, like, and I got the second one out. I'm like making sure they're all good. And then we hear the door open and the midwives are coming in. And I'm like, I'm, I'm literally like a kid with a hand in the cookie jar. Like I have one and it's my mom's got the other. And like, they come in like, what the fuck? I was like, I didn't do it. <laughs> I'm just holding the baby. What do you want from me? Can't put him back in. I, that's not how it works. It's almost like it's almost like you got a, a room of you know like screenplay writers, like people yeah. who write movies together, and they all just like wrote different stories, put them in a hat, and then dumped it out on your yeah. life. And put, oh, them, yeah. put, them, and put them all, all in yeah, our pocket. Put them all in our life. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it, but that was like one of the coolest moments for Bodie and his mom, and so. Like, this is the crazy part. Since Bodie was like 22, 23, he said, I will have identical twin boys born on my birthday. Like the first or second day we what? met, he's like, I'm going to have identical twin boys born on my birthday. And I was like, uh, I don't care. And you can't order that stuff. Yeah. And then we get further down the path. And we like, we start having kids and every single time we're like, do you think these are going to be your twins? And he was always so enthusiastically. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. So Easton was three months old um, and he, we flew to Sweden um, because he was over there for a few weeks and I was there for five days and it was Valentine's Day. We woke up and I had an email from a friend of mine who's an intuitive and she said, I don't normally reach out when someone is reaching out to me that someone is lost, but your daughter has been just contacting me over and over and over again. And she's recognizing something really special about today or this week. And she's sending you a lot of love. And I wake Bodie up and I'm like, whatever mm. happened last night, <laughs> I'm pregnant. I, I, I read the happened. email. <laughs> like I'm telling you, whatever happened, I'm pregnant. And sure enough, two weeks later, we get a positive pregnancy test. And I said, it's like, Emmy's got her hand in this. It's going to be a little girl. I was so excited. And I go, do you think it's going to be your twins? He's like, no, I don't think it's going to be twins. I think it's going to be one little girl. So he went golfing. I got a phone call. I was like, I was almost 10 weeks pregnant. And they said, we have an opening for an ultrasound. Do you want to come in? And I think we were getting ready to go out of town the next day. I said, yeah. So I asked Bodie if he wanted to come. He's like, no, I'm going to go golfing. I was like, okay, we've done this enough. I get it. She makes that sound worse than it was. So. That's true. Yeah. Um, and so I get there and the ultrasound tech asked me, why are you in? I said, well, I get my blood test tomorrow. We're leaving tomorrow. I want to make sure the baby's healthy. And my husband's always wanted twins. So I want to make sure it's one baby and not two. And she laughed at me like, okay, good luck. Yeah. twins." And sure enough. So she has it up on the ultrasound. She's like, do you see the flicker? That's a heartbeat. I was like, yeah, I've done this a bunch. And then with that, she turns off the monitor and she turns it back towards herself because it was projected up on the wall. And yeah. so now I'm panicking, thinking that something's wrong with the baby. And she's going like this across my stomach. And oh my she gosh. looks at me and she goes, there are two heartbeats. I go, does that mean there's two babies? Or does <laughs> one baby have two hearts? Yeah. <laughs> And she goes, it's twins. So she turns it back on. She turns the screen back towards me and she's like, and she shows me and you could tell that they're identical because they're in the same sack. So I FaceTime him 
to show him, like, I want to introduce you to baby A. He's like, cool. I'm like, and baby B. And he's like, what? And he throws his golf club on the ground. He starts crying. And so now we're convinced it's girls. I buy maybe 50 matching girl outfits. I'm like, oh, it is going to so, be girls. So many. So many. <laughs> she has a real retail problem. They're so good. Especially the online. <laughs> it's online. So guilt. <laughs> Have you ever been on guilt? It is. Yes. Uh, the most dangerous oh, app ever. It's like two o'clock in the morning. I get it all in the morning. I'm like, what the shit? Somebody bought like a <laughs> bunch of stuff on guilt last night in the middle of the night. I think my credit card sack. She's like, maybe, or maybe I woke up at two and shopped for an hour. Um, <laughs> so we do the blood test and we get the blood test back and my midwife calls him and says. Well, yeah, obviously we know the midwife really well. And she's like, it's, it's a boy or they're boys. You got to tell Morgan. I was like, shit, no, you tell her. I'm not telling her. <laughs> I'm like, You're paid. I'm not paid shit. You're telling her. And I just, I, I was like. She laughed for like 20 minutes and then she was like, oh God. We didn't talk for like five days and I said, we got to redo it. It's wrong. There is no Y chromosome in this area. It is a girl. There are two girls in there. So we retake it. It comes back. Sure enough, Y chromosome detected. And it it was like, wow. we had already, we had three boys at the time and Easton was four months old, five months old. And then actually she did, my birthday is October 11th. She went into labor on October or October 12th. And she went into labor on October 11th. And I was like, I knew it. It's on. And then she like uh-uh. took a bunch of herbs and like made it stop. And then not like made... marijuana herbs. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, oh, mid- like midwife, mid- 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 midwife herbs and, and made yeah. it stop. Um, so they, they stayed in there and cooked for another. Like, she carried them full term. I mean, there was 15 pounds. Oh of my baby. gosh. It was insane. There were 7, 12, and 6, 13. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. And then he delivered them. Yeah, and then popped him out of there. In two nutty. minutes flat. Yeah, athletes. Jeez. I feel like we could talk to you guys forever about a lot of things. Many babies. And we might stop at two. Don't take offense to that. Honestly, it's not a bad idea. Coming from yeah. almost eight, oh, it's a really good gosh. place to stop. Yeah. But, I feel like it's a slippery slope. If you got past two, it like can sometimes spiral on you. Because they are off, like, right? what's another one? If you have if you have the if you have the means, I mean honestly, you really don't talk to old people who are like, I wish I'd had less kids. Usually they're like, yeah. I wish I'd had one more, I wish I'd had kids. And like you guys are yeah. young. I mean, but yeah, it's a no no pressure on anybody. We we sometimes uh look longingly at parents who are ripping around with one kid and they're like Oh, you carry them. Okay. It's like if I try to carry my kids, I there's no no possible <laughs> mechanism to carry all You're my outnumbered. Kids. It's yeah. not it's not in the cards. <laughs> yeah. Uh well we're so, so excited for you guys. Um, we ask every couple the same exact question though, which is with everything you've gone through, what is the one piece of relationship advice you would give or have been given? I mean, for for me, it's and I think it's probably maybe it's not universal advice but like you got to be honest with yourself like if if you're if you're committed then that means something different than if you're just married you know like i see it all the time people like get married because they just want to be married and they're not really committed committed is a different thing it's like i like to think of it in terms of the way you're committed to you know breathing or the way you might be committed to a kid or something it's like a real commitment like you're you're going to do it or you're going to like die. And that to me is like, that informs all your other decisions. Then you priorities start to make sense. It's not like there's this big gray area. It's just, it's like, there's one mission and it's to be, you know, the best spouse and father you can. And if you, if that informs all your other priorities, it makes everything really clear. It's, it's a lot easier. Mine would go back to, it's not a competition. Like you are not in competition. You're not competing with your spouse. And some days one of you is going to do more than the other, but other days it will reverse and know that, um, (laughs) being able to communicate effectively and in a way where you can remove the emotion and know that you're coming no matter what, when someone's saying something, they're coming from a place of love that they're not, Mm. it's not (laughs) coming from a place of selfishness. It's coming from a place of love, your teammates, you're doing it together, effective communication, it's huge and forgiveness. All right. Well, Bodie Morgan, thank you so much for taking the time. I, uh, I feel like 
we could literally sit here and just talk for hours. Yes. But we're so thankful that you gave us the time. Uh, we're thankful for all the difference that you made in the world, for um, all the good that you've you've created out of some tough situations. And we're excited to see how you guys grow and evolve as a family uh, over the next little bit. But look forward to staying in touch. <laughs>